This program is brought to you by Polartec. The Ultra Trail Mont Blanc is the ultimate in the world of Ultra Trail races. This race is the benchmark for the international Ultra Trail runners. For a trail runner, UTMB is like the Olympic Games or the Football World Cup. It's kind of a dream race. Welcome to Chamonix in the French Alps at the bottom of the highest mountain of Western Europe, Mont Blanc. Chamonix is the starting point of the 2011 Ultra Trail Mont Blanc, the ninth edition of the ultimate and most famous trail race in the world. A non-stop run of 166 kilometers around the peak from Chamonix to Chamonix passing through Italy and Switzerland. But it isn't just the length of the race, it's the hills that make it so difficult. Nine and a half thousand meters of altitude is climbed. But it's an unbelievable challenge for the 2,600 plus participants. 2,400 men and just over 200 women. 45 nationalities present, all of whom gained qualification in two major races. For most, the main goal is just to finish within the 46-hour limit. But of course, for the top runners, this is more of a sprint. Well, let's look at the winners of the 2010 edition. It was Britt Jezbrag who won the men's. Well, for me, UTMB changed my life because it was my first long-distance trail before I had only marathons. And more than that, it's a personal point of view, but this race brings me a lot. It shows me, myself, that I can handle Premier, trail racing. Um, trail race in the world. I think in the, um, in the eight years it's been running, it's gained the recognition and the credibility very quickly. I try not to think about the competition, and for me it's important just to run with passion and with my heart and to run the best that I can at every moment and to try and get everything out of myself during the race. And if I can do that, then that's all I can ask. And then what happens, happens. Really, the uh, main interest is to take pleasure. You face the mountain, the elements. If you're not ready to be in harmony with the mountain, well, then go back to the track. The mountain presents a cost to you, and it's always expensive. It's very expensive. Well, in the women's last year, it was won by Brit Elizabeth Hawker, who finished an amazing overall 18th position. As the competitors get ready for this ninth edition, sadly, bad weather comes in, and it has to be postponed for five hours. But as nighttime falls, and so does rain, the start gets underway. Five hours of waiting is over. For me, it's my first UTMB. It's really impressive. It's cold at altitude and the wind, maybe snow. And finally, at 11.28 p.m., the start is underway. A big relief for the competitors, who are supported by several thousand locals and fans.
after 30 minutes of racing and only eight kilometers already the leaders are at the first refreshment it's in Les Oches, and already five runners open up a gap three Spaniards are in the lead Carrera Eras and Cornet one American Wolf and one Hungarian Saba are just behind The gap increases even more as the head of the race doesn't stop for refreshment. Instead, he blasts ahead. But the rain and cold on the rest of the Bogot bodies is causing suffering already. After a good start, the Frenchman Sebastien Chaineau is closing the gap on the head of the race. When he arrives at Les Contamine, after 31 kilometers, he's now in fifth position. Chaineau is now just two minutes behind the three Spaniards, who still lead the race ahead of Hungarian Shaba. After a bit more than five hours of running, the leaders already swallow up 50 kilometers and arrive in Les Chapeaux. Good news for the Frenchman, Chanot, as he's closed the gap on the three Spanish leaders. There are now four runners at the front, three from Spain and a Frenchman. The Japanese Cabarucci, who was third in 09, is already almost 30 minutes behind the leaders. As for Jez Bragg, the winner in 2010, the Brit is suffering from the bad weather and has lost 34 minutes on the leaders. In the women's race, the favorite is Elizabeth Hawker. She's still in the top 15 overall as she arrives at Les Chapeaux. The triple queen of UTMB looks good for a fourth crown. Neri Martinez, the Spaniard, is in second in the women's race. Well, the readers now face a Col de la Seine, two and a half thousand meters high between France and Italy. On top, volunteers wait for the runners. Well, we can now find out how they organize this race. All the get competitors get a transponder, which permits us to know exactly where they are. Almost the whole seven kilometers during this bit of the route, we have them. Information is managed and treated, and we live here permanently leading up to the race and also in Chamonix at the HQ. The volunteers don't have long to wait to see the first competitor arriving at the top of La Cine. Spaniards Jornet, Carrera and Herreras are just ahead of Frenchman Chagnot. They touch the top of the pass at 06.12 a.m., just before the sun rises. Okay. Uh, how's it going, Seb? Well, for the moment, everything's fine. I'm a bit surprised to be here, but I know it was a fast start. These guys can accelerate still. We'll see. How was the night? Yeah, good. Shorter than usual. So it was okay. Further back in fifth, the Hungarian Nevet Shaba is just two minutes behind.
best of enemies. Novak Djokovic has grabbed the world number one spot from Rafael Nadal and the Wimbledon title. Last year, though, Nadal won his first US Open, beating Djokovic. So there are big scores to settle back in the cauldron of New York City. The US Open, tomorrow at 1915, live on Eurosport. back to the 2011 Ultra Trail Mont Blanc. The runners are passing over La Cine at two and a half thousand meters where snow is present. The going's much more difficult for the pack. Only the beauty of the landscape is respite for these ultra conditioned athletes. The leaders begin to descend away from the White Peak and approach Mont Favre. Still in control of this race, favorite Hornet from Spain, pushing his opponents every step of the way. He makes a fast climb of Mont Favre to increase his gap on fellow runners Chagnot and Carrera. Perhaps Killian Hornet is just playing with the morale of his rivals, though, as he slows his efforts. So there are still four runners at the head after 69 kilometers. Behind, of course, the amateurs are still passing Lassine. Among them in the training pack is the first woman, Brit Lizzie Hawker, who touches the peak of La Cine in 15th position overall, 40 minutes behind the head of the race. Even she begins to suffer somewhat with a painful left hip. For the majority of the competitors, though, there's still a long way to go as they are only 45 kilometers into the race. As the amateurs battle on, the leaders arrive in Cormayeur after nine hours of racing. The majority of the pack is still in the snow on Bonhomme Pass, 33 kilometers behind. The town of Cormayeur in Italy marks the halfway of the race for the leaders. It's the 78 kilometer mark. Still, four men lead. They arrive in Cormayeur at 08.04 a.m. with a five minute gap ahead of the nearest runner. Hornet takes a little time in passing through the checkpoint, which is not the case for the Frenchman, who loses quite a few minutes on his rivals. In sixth place is the American Mike Wolf, who arrives at Cormier Refreshments 10 minutes after the leaders, who have already restarted. The halfway point is where the athletes ditch their clothes from the night before. With that equipment left behind, 
They are lighter on their feet. After Comayer, there's only two men in the lead. Spaniard, Hornet and Carrera. They pass the Berton Refuge with a slightly bigger gap on their fellow countryman, Miguel Eras, who suffered in the last few kilometers with a knee problem. Well, this is a story of mental toughness as well as physical. They get to the bottom of a 10 kilometer climb known as Val Ferret. The highest point of the race is at the peak, 2,537 meters up. Still, it's the three Spaniards in front. They have four minutes on Frenchman Sebastian Chanot. Further back, athletes are suffering badly. Uh, after 10 hours, I've been vomiting. Doctor says, are you still vomiting in Comayor? No, no, it was after Comayor. But I'm in the hills to try. After 10 hours of racing, the pack is stretching out and the gaps are increasing at every level of the race. Suffering more and more from his damaged knee, Miguel Eras still tries to follow his friends, but little by little the gap increases, which is good news for the Frenchman Chagnot, who is very close to Eras. Hornet and Carrera are still in the lead when they touch the top of Grand Col Ferre. They have one minute over Eras and two minutes on Chagnot. Behind, the Frenchman closes the gap with their ass at the beginning of the downhill section, which takes them on into Switzerland. Behind the Frenchman back in fifth position is the Hungarian Nemet Shaba, who loses contact with the race leaders. As he passes the peak of Grand Fall Ferret, he is 18 minutes behind. And it's a good fight for sixth spot between American Wolf and Portuguese Saar. But it's hard going further back. Oh, I've lost my jacket. Oh, no, it's there. Okay. Oh, As the two leaders are passing at La Puelle, after 102 kilometers, it's 11.25 a.m. Lizzie Hawker, the female category leader, is passing the Benati Refuge at the 90 kilometer mark. She is 45 minutes ahead of the closest woman. Miguel Arras is still fighting the Frenchman. Still plenty to go.
Truly vivid by Super AMOLED Plus. Samsung Galaxy S2. My race started 12 years, 72 days, and 9.79 seconds ago. I stood on the edge of greatness, doing what I always dreamed of. Running against giants. Pushing myself to be the fastest man of all time. I know what it takes to reach the stars. Catch me at the World Athletics Championships, live on Eurosport. Welcome back to the 2011 Ultra Trail Mont Blanc. The runners are in the final stages of this brutal adventure race. And four men arrive at Pras de Four after 118 kilometers. Hornet, Carrera, Eras, and Chagno. But as they attack the hill of Champé Lac, the Spaniard switches on the turbo, and the Frenchman Chagno can't follow the rhythm of the leaders. The Spaniards arrive at Champé-Lac, six kilometers on, and after almost 15 hours of running, the three have a slight margin on the Frenchman. They take a quick refreshment. Killian appears to have no tiredness whatsoever. But that isn't the same for Arras, nor Chagnon as he arrives. Two minutes behind the Spaniards. This stage of the race, refreshments are vital to pick up the energy levels. So Killian, he's just waiting for us. Sometimes he accelerates in the hills, but no one can follow. After that, he stops and waits for us. Because of falling rocks the night before, the organizers decide to take the race on another route through the four-class pass. A detour, which brings the length of the race up by six kilometers to 171. And finally, 9,700 meters of positive change in altitude, a hundred higher than previously expected. As the leaders have already left Champagne, the female category leader, Elizabeth Hawker, finally arrives at La Folie, almost 20 kilometers back, but with a gap of one hour 15. The leaders head down into France. The rest of the top 10 runners are between La Folie and La Praz de Four, 35 kilometers behind. After the second route modification, the runners should pass at Argentière, almost one hour from the finish line. It's at this moment that Killian Hornet chooses to attack and make the difference. Straight away, the 23-year-old Spaniard leaves his companions behind and heads for victory. Finally, Killian Hornet enters into Chamonix at 8.03 p.m. The arrival worthy of this tough race in to a buzzing crowd. He's cheered all the way to the finish line, which he crosses at 8.05 p.m. after 20 hours, 36 minutes, and 43 seconds of running. It's the third victory in four years for the Spanish competitor, Killian Hornet. 
y ha sido una carrera muy especial. Ha habido It was a great race. Very good for me. Uno, la salida del sol An incredible el, memory was eh, the rising sun at Las Cien Pass. Luces, Magical moment, really. Incredible. Con la luna, con el sol, With the rising con sun, nubes, the moon, the clouds. Moreover, I'm very happy to run the whole race with my good friends, Carrera, Miguel Arras, and Sebastián Chagno. The Spaniard Ica Carrera does an incredible performance by taking second position. Only eight minutes, 47 seconds behind Hornet. And after finishing second in 09, the Frenchman Sebastian Chagnot takes third place. 18 minutes, 58 seconds behind the leader. Importantly for the locals, he stopped the Spanish clean sweep of the podium. And Elizabeth Hawker of Great Britain, who suffered pain in her hip for most of the race, finished 13th overall and won her fourth UTMB in the female category. She finished in 25 hours and two minutes. She was over two hours ahead of second place, the Spaniard Nira Martinez. However, for most, there is still a long way to Chamonix. And after a second night in the mountains, most of them prefer to take a bit of time just to recharge the batteries. Well, I'm not getting any sleep, it's, it's so difficult. But I must try. For some competitors, it's not just sleep that they need, but medical attention as well. But they don't have much time for recuperation and healing because there is a maximum finishing time. But of course, as you get tighter, it becomes harder to run. But that's the Ultra Trail Mont Blanc. I just wanted to know what the UTMB was like. It's the pinnacle for a trail runner. When you love this sport, you have to try it once and hope to finish. It was great, though. All day long in Chamonix, competitors arrive at the finish line. The UTMB has only 1,100 finishers. Over 1,200 are forced to give up. But the completion of such a race gives sheer delight, especially for those who take the victory. Kilian Hornet of Spain in the men's competition. Winning by a time over eight minutes ahead of his best friend Carrera.
This program was brought to you by Polatech.